Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope all of you are fine and safe. Welcome to our science class. I am your teacher, Jem Raimon, and today I'll be sharing with you my sample classroom observation video in Science 6 for this school year. And I hope it can help you, my dear fellow teachers, in preparing your lesson also. And for our learners, hope you learn more about the topic Simple Machines. Happy watching, everyone! Go forth, rise and shine to us all. Escalante Central Elementary School. You've entrusted us your vision. Building your dreams would be our mission. Hello Grade 6 learners! How are you today? Are you okay? I hope everybody is fine and safe. Welcome again to our science class. Today, we will have another science adventure. Are you excited? You know what? This would be an amazing day for all of us. As long as you follow our agreed rules every time we start our science class. And if you can still remember, I've already given this to you even before we start our school year. Now, what are again our science offline classroom rules? Rule number one, be ready. Always wear a smile every day class. Be physically and mentally ready. Be on time. And always follow our class program. And what is our schedule for our science class? Very good! Every Wednesday of the week. Rule number two. Be prepared. Prepare all the things you need in our class such as your notebook, your portfolio, your ball pen, and even the electronic copies of your module. And after that, Find quiet study area. Rule number three, be attentive and obedient. Listen attentively during our discussion and obey all the instructions I give to you. Since I am not there with you at home, always obey your parents. Understood? Very good. Rule number Four, be focused and disciplined. As much as possible, avoid disruptions. And for you to do that, no playing of video games and toys while we are having our class. I'm sure you are doing this always. And good job. We have rule number five. Be participative. Do all the required activities and submit that on time. We have our group chat, right? Please participate in our discussion there. As long as you follow all these rules, for sure, this would be an amazing day for all of us. I guess we are all set and ready to explore the world of science. Now, before we start our lesson, let us answer first the what's in part of your module, particularly the module 3 of your science 6, quarter 3. And this could be found on page 5. Let us read first the direction. Now directions, match the tools needed to do the task in column A with the objects in column B. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Now, you don't need to write anymore your answer on a separate sheet of paper because we will answer it all together since we are adapting the offline delivery of your lesson. Let's have number one, C source. Now, what is the appropriate task to do using scissors? You choose your answer here in column B. What do you think? Yes, very good. The rule of cloth. We can cut this cloth using scissors. Let's have number two, the knife. What do you think is the appropriate task to do using knife. Yes, very good! Slicing an apple. Slicing an apple can be done using knife. 
Let's have number three, broom. What task is appropriate with the use of broom? Very good! Sweeping of waste is done with the use of the broom. We have number four, the nail cutter. We have two options here left. Collecting of garbage and cutting of nails. What do you think is the answer? Yes, very good again. You can cut your nails using a nail cutter. And obviously, the use of wheelbarrow. We can collect garbage using wheelbarrow. Now, this is the what's in part of your module. Now, I have here different set of tools class and we will classify and describe these tools. Now, let's have the first set of tools and how do you classify and describe this tools class? What does it show? Very good! This shows the different Kitchen utensils. These tools are commonly used in the kitchen. Okay, now let's have an example. Yes, that's a squash. And how about this? Yes, that's an eggplant. If you want to cut it, if you want to slice it, what tools here are you going to use? Very good! You can use knife if you want to cut or slice this. Now, let's have the second set of picture. Now, what can you say about this picture class? What kind of tools are these? Yes, very good. These are carpentry tools. Now, I have here a wood and a nail. How can you fasten the nail into the wood? What tool is appropriate here to use to fasten the nail into the wood. What do you think? Yes, very good! We need a hammer to fasten the nail into the wood. Let's have the third set of picture. How would you describe and classify these tools? Yes, these tools are used for dressmaking. And these are the different dressmaking or sewing tools. Now, I have here cloth class. And if I want to cut it, what appropriate tool here in our sewing tools should I use? Very good. Scissor is appropriate to use to cut this cloth. And let's have the fourth set of picture. How do you classify this class? What can you say about these tools? Very good! These tools are used for gardening. Or we can say that these are gardening tools. Now, what is the tool appropriate to use if I want to dig the soil? What tool is used for digging? Yes, shovel can be used in digging the soil. By looking at these tools here on screen class, do you have an idea what our lesson is all about today? Yes, it's about simple machines. Now, would you like to know more about simple machines? Today, we are going to manipulate simple machines to describe their characteristics and uses. Are you now ready? Now, are you ready to have our science adventure for today? Particularly in exploring the world of simple machines? But before we start our activity, what are again our basic safety rules in doing our science offline activity? Don't forget the acronym SCIENCE because as you all know, this is your guide in performing your science offline activity. S stands for 
in securing all the materials you need for the activity. And don't forget to follow all the written and verbal instructions for the activity. Most importantly, ask the assistance of your parents, especially if you are doubtful or confused with the instructions. C stands for carefully handle all the materials. Be cautious or be careful all the time, understood? And determine also the potential hazards and safety precautions in handling the materials before the start of the activity. I stands for inform your parents or your guardians about your activity. Do not start the activity unless you have your parents or your guardians with you. Understood? Ask their help. Ask their assistance in performing the activity. E stands for eating, playing pranks, and all other acts that could distract you in performing your activity are strictly prohibited. Understood? Very good. N stands for never get distracted because distractions can lead to accident. So that's why you have to focus on performing your science activity. You have also to work quietly as much as possible because that is a sign also of respect to your family members who are with you there at home. C stands for create safe and conducive working space. Never work alone. Remember that. Always ask the assistance and guidance from your parents or your guardians. And as much as possible, if this is available at home, you wear your safety gears always while performing your activity. No? Such as your gloves, your lap gown, or your apron, or your googles. E stands for equipment should be utilized according to its designated purpose. All the equipments, all the materials you need should be returned safely to its proper place. To perform your activity safely and to remember all the basic safety rules we have, don't forget the acronym SCIENCE. And let's have our first activity entitled Lifting Using Rumps. For your first activity, you need the following materials. We have four books. One big book, we have cord, we have also one meter board or one meter wooden board, and we have also one half meter wooden board. We have also spring balance. If spring balance is not available, you may use an alternative which is a hanging weighing scale. Do you have these materials at home? I know some of you have these materials, but some of you don't have this. Don't worry if you don't have these materials at home because I have an alternative activity for you to do later on. But first, let us perform this activity using these materials shown here on screen. If you have this at home, then you can get it now. Are you ready? Very okay, good. Remember always our basic safety rules, the acronym SCIENCE in performing this activity. Now, let's have the procedure. First, all you have to do is to stack four books on the table. Okay, the four books you have, compile that into four, like this one. And then after that, Tie a cord around the big book, then attach it to a spring balance. So you have there with you your cord and your big book, right? All you have to do is to tie the cord into the big book, like this one. Are you following? Very good. And after that, you have to attach the spring balance in the cord tied in the big book, like what you have seen here on the screen. Please do it now. Are you done? Very good. Next, 
Lift the big books onto the stack of books by pulling the spring balance. For you to clearly illustrate this procedure, let me show this to you. This is your big book in which the spring balance is attached to it and this is the stack of books. All you have to do is to lift this book on the top of this stack of books. Iangat mo yung libro na to class using the spring balance at ilagay mo dito sa ibabaw ng mga libro na to. Or in Cebuano, alsahon ta ni nga libro gamit ang spring balance tapos ibutang nato diri sa ibabaw. Again, as I said, instead of spring balance, if this spring balance is not available at home, then you may use an alternative which is the hanging weighing scale. So this is how it is done. Did you get it, class? Very good. And number three, take the reading on the spring balance. So upon lifting the book, you have to take note of the reading shown in the spring balance. Are you done? Very good. Next is use a board half a meter long to make an inclined plane. So we have here our setup. So this time we will use a half meter wooden board inclined to the stack of books. Are you done? Then lift the books up the inclined plane as far as the higher end. But this time we will use this wooden board in lifting the books. And then after that, take the reading on the spring balance. Now, to clearly demonstrate these procedures, let me show this to you. This is our book. No? Attach is the spring balance to it. Okay, this is how it is done. Are you following? Very good. After that class, compare the readings you've Taken. The reading you have when you just lift the book without this wooden ramp and the reading you have now with this setup. Take note about that. Next, use longer board as inclined plane. Get the reading on the spring balance and compare it with other readings. This time, we will use the longer wooden board. Then, same procedure, we will lift the book using the spring balance, but this time we will use the longer wooden board. And this is how it is done. Observe. Take note with the spring balance reading. Now use this table to record the data you gathered. The first one is lifting the book with inclined plane. What is the weight seen in the spring balance? And after that, Write also here the weight of the big book when you lift that using a half meter board as inclined plane. And of course, the weight also of the big book when you lift it using a longer board as inclined plane. You may write this on your notebook. Okay, are you done? Very good. Now, for those who have not performed activity earlier because you don't have the materials available at home, as I said, I will be giving you an alternative activity for you to do for activity number one. And this time, we will use your self-learning module. And please refer to the what's new part of your module in Science 6, particularly the module 3. And this could be found on page 6. Now look for a stair at home. Do you have stairs in your house? Or, do you have a ladder at home? How would you describe and use this at home? Now, let me give you these options. For the characteristics and for the uses. Now, what is the characteristic and use of stair and a ladder? What do you think? Very good! Flat and inclined. That is how to describe stair and ladder. 
Ladder and stairs are used to connect lower level to a higher level. This time, let's proceed to the activity 2 and we will entitle this Cutting with Wedge. Again class, please be reminded always of the basic safety rules in doing our science activity, especially in doing activity number 2. Please handle all the materials you will be needing here carefully. And of course, please ask the assistance of your parents or guardians at home in doing this. Do not do this alone. Understood? Very good. Now, the materials that you will be needing here are the knife. In using this tool, you have to be careful, okay? And also, fruit like an apple or any fruits that are available at home. It's okay. Now, if these materials are not available, then you can use an alternative, which is an axe and a piece of wood. And if these material are still not available at home, you can use also a piece of bamboo and a handsaw. Again, you just select any of these materials which are available at home. And please take note, please handle this material carefully and ask the assistance of your parents. And do not do this activity without their presence. Do you have the materials with you now? Very good. Again, be careful in doing activity number two, safety first. Understood? Now, these are the procedures for activity number two. First, get a knife. If knife is not available, then you may use axe. If axe is still not available at home, then you may use a saw or hand saw. Then, observe the appearance or observe the surface of the tool you have there at home. Are you done? Next. Cut a fruit with a knife. Okay? You may cut the apple or any fruits available at home with a knife. Or, if you are using axe, then split a piece of wood with an axe. Please be careful in handling these materials, okay? And please ask the assistance of your parents also. If you are using a handsaw, cut a piece of bamboo with the handsaw. Okay, are you done? Now, if you don't have these materials at home, I will have a separate activity for you to do later on. Next, please answer these questions. Do the knife, axe, and saw have sloping surface? When we talk about sloping class, it's somewhat diagonal in shape, just like you see here on screen. Do the knife, axe, and saw have this kind of surface? Next, letter B. Which part of the saw, axe, or knife cuts the objects? So what particular part of the saw, the axe, and knife cut the objects? And letter C. Which part of the saw, axe, or knife splits the object? Kapag sinabi nating splits class, ano mang part ng lagari, ng palakol, at saka kutsilyo ang napaghiwalay niya yung isang object? You may write your answer on your note. Still, we will use the what's new part of your self-learning module on page 6 as an alternative activity for those who have not performed activity number 2. This is an example of a knife class, right? And try to observe its appearance. How do you describe a knife? And what do you think is its use? Okay? Now, let me give you these options so that you can answer this easily. For the characteristics, these are the options. And for the uses, these are the options. What do you think is the correct characteristic and use of the knife here? Very good! Knife has a sharp edge. And of course, knife is used for cutting. This time, let's proceed to activity number three entitled, Working with Screw. Activity number three, 
the materials that you will need would be bolt and nut. Do you have these materials at home? If you don't have bolt and nut at home, you may use peanut butter jar or any similar jar as an alternative. Okay, you may use either of these materials. Again, if you don't have these materials at home, I will be giving you another activity later on. Now, let's have the procedure for activity number three. Number one, take a very long bolt, spin a knot around it, just like you see here on the screen. Just follow it. Or, if you don't have bolt and knot, you may take this step. Take a peanut butter jar or similar jar, then screw the lid on, then unscrew it. Just like you see here on the screen. You open the bottle, and then you close the bottle. As simple as that. Are you done? Very good. Now, after doing the activity, you answer these questions. Number one, how would you describe the screw? And number two, what is the use of the screw? Write your answer in your notebook. If you don't have these materials at home, we will be using again your self-learning module as an alternative activity. And still, we will use the what's new part of your module found on page 6. Now, this is an example of a bolt screw. Try to observe its appearance. What do you think is its characteristics and what is the bolt screw for? Okay? Now, for you to have an idea, let me give you this option. For its characteristics, and these are the options for its uses. What do you think is the characteristic of a bolt screw and how it is used? Yes, very good. Bolt screw is spiral in appearance and it is used to fasten things together or to hold things together. Now let's have activities 4, 5, and 6 and we will call the remaining activities as this or that. Let's have activity number 4 entitled Let's get rolling by this or that. Now, this is the scenario for activity number four. You went to a grocery store together with your mother to buy things needed for the birthday party of your little sister. The grocery items you bought are quite heavy. To pay all the groceries, you need to transfer the items to the cashier section. For activity number four, you answer this in your notebook. What do you think is the better tool to use to easily transfer the grocery items? This basket or that cart? Number two question. How the tool you chose helps in doing work? Next, let's have activity number five. Entitled, Try This or That. This is the scenario for activity number five. Your mother together with your closest relatives are busy preparing the food for the birthday celebration of your sister. Your mother asked you to fetch water in the well found in your backyard. For activity number five, you have to answer this in your notebook. Other than the bucket and the rope, what tool do you need to easily fetch the water from the well? This pulley? or that ramp. Number two, using the tool you chose. How does it help your work easier? And let's have activity number six. Open using this or that. This is the scenario. During the birthday party celebration, you are told by your mother to serve bottle of beverages to your visitors. For activity number six, you need to answer this in your notebook. What tool is appropriate to use in opening the bottles? The spoon or that bottle opener? And number two, how does it help in doing work easier? 
Now let's discuss your activity number one entitled Lifting Using Ramps. You use these materials in your activity number one, right? Now, among these materials, what did you use in lifting the book? The big book particularly. Yes, you used the weighing scale or spring balance. But aside from that, what did you use in lifting the book? Very good. You used these boards in lifting the book based in your activity class. What did you use to lift the book easier and much faster? Yes, very good. The books were lifted easier and faster using the longer board. Now, how can you say that lifting the book is done easier and faster using a longer board? Yes, the work done easier and faster using the longer board or the longer ramp since it only requires less effort or less force in lifting the book. Mas konti lang yung pwersa na ginamit mo when you lift the book using a longer ramp compared to the short ones. Now, how is the board used here, class? As far as lifting of the book is concerned. Yes, very good. The wooden board here is used as inclined plane. Now, how do you describe inclined plane? But before you answer that, what do we mean by a plane class? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng plane para mas maintindihan pa natin yung ibig sabihin ng inclined plane? When we talk about plane class, plane is literally a flat surface, just like you see here on the screen. But how about inclined? What do we mean by inclined? Inclined means slope. Now, what do we mean by inclined plane? So we can say that an inclined plane is just a flat surface where one end is higher than the other. And what activity show where an inclined plane is commonly used? What do you think? Yes, an inclined plane is commonly used in transporting heavy objects or heavy loads. Inclined plane used to lift or raises heavy objects simply by means of moving up a slope. Now, can you elaborate more how inclined plane is used to transfer or transport heavy loads? Now, how will you transfer this heavy container up here? What are you going to do? You will lift this using your hand? Let's try. Now, this will happen if you use your hands in lifting this heavy container. What have you noticed? Yes, it would be very difficult on your part to lift this heavy container using your bare hands because you will need a lot of your effort, a lot of your force lifting this container. Now, what will you do then? What are you going to use? It would be much easier on your part if you use inclined plane in lifting this heavy container up here. You just need to carry this by pulling or pushing it with less effort or force. Napakadaling paraan talaga ang paggamit ng inclined plane class in lifting this heavy container up here. Maliit na pwersa lang ang kakailanganin para magawa ito. Do the length of the inclined plane and its slope matter in transporting heavy load? Based on your activity earlier, in your activity number one, the answer would be yes. And why can you say so? Now, the longer the slope class, or kung masyadong matarik ang slope o yung inclined plane mo, the farther you have to pull this heavy container up here. Why? It is because it would require more of your effort, it would require more of your force to lift this object up here. Na kung hindi masyadong mahaba ang gagamitin mo na ramp or inclined plane, yun nga, matarik yung slope na mabubuo mo. 
Pwede mo namang maiangat yung mabigat na bagay na to or mabigat na container na to, pero yun lang. Malaki ang pwersa na gagamitin mo para maiangat yung bagay na ito pataas. The longer the ramp is, the gentler its slope. The less force or the less effort it would take you to make the load lifted straight up. Kung mahaba yung gagamitin mo na ramp class or inclined plane, just like you see here on the screen, maliit din yung slope na mabubuo o hindi masyadong matarik. Kung hindi masyadong matarik ang inclined plane na mabubuo, mas madali mo na lang itong maitulak pataas. Now, what other activities that inclined plane can be used? What do you think? Where can we use inclined plane? Yes, an inclined plane is also used in lowering the load, just like here in the dam track. Some more. Where can we use inclined plane? Yes, you're correct. Instead of using stairs, inclined plane is also used specially by our PWDs or persons with disabilities in getting in and getting outside the building or in school. You know what class? All building establishments are required to have this platform or this ramp specially to be utilized by our PWDs. Their building permit will not be approved without this ramp. Now, what are other examples of inclined plane? Can you name some? Correct! Stairs are common examples of an inclined plane. Some more. Yes, very good! The slides in the playground or even in the swimming pool are all examples of inclined plane. Yes, the escalators also that usually found in the malls are examples of inclined plane. This hill slope class is also an example of an inclined plane. And also the different flyover roads class found in the highways are examples of inclined planes. Now what can you say about this picture class? How about this? What can you say about its design? This one. What can you say about this picture? How about this? How about this class? What can you say about its interior design? This one. What can you see? inside this house. What can you say about the exterior and the interior designs of this building's class? Yes, obviously, this shows various amazing architectural designs of buildings and houses. What have you noticed, class, in the architectural design of these buildings? Yes, you're correct. Simple machines are found in the designs of these buildings. Now, what are the different simple machines present in the architectural designs of these buildings? Very good! There are inclined planes used in the architectural designs of these buildings. Can you identify which part of the design where inclined planes are found or being used? Let's have this design. Where can we find the inclined plane here? Yes, we can find the inclined plane here in the design of the roof. Some more. Yes, the ramp also is designed as inclined plane. How about this? Where can we find in the design the inclined plane? Obviously, still in the roof. How about this one? Yes, this one is the part where inclined plane can be found. This one also. And also this one. How about this building? Where can we find the inclined plane? Yes, this part. This design of a building is usually have a garage on the top of the building. Usually this is used as a way for the cars to go up into the building. Some more. 
where can we find the inclined plane here? Yes, this one is an inclined plane also, the ramp. And also this one. How about the interior design of this building? Where can we find the inclined plane? Yes, the stairs. And how about this one? Also the stairs. What have you noticed here? Yes. Usually, the roof are designed as inclined plane together with the ramp and the stairs. The roof, the ramp, and the stairs are some of the common examples of inclined plane found in this architectural design. Now, why is it that the roofs are always designed as inclined plane? What do you think is the reason? Ano kaya yung dahilan kung bakit inclined plane yung design ng ating buildings or ng ating mga houses class? Just like you see here in our screen, even the ancestral house. And also this house. The roof of this house is also designed as inclined plane. Why do you think is the reason why all the roofs are designed as inclined plane. Yes, very good. Aside from it is used for shelter, roofs are always designed as inclined plane to let the rainwater run off. Inclined roofs minimizes the chances for water lagging because the rainwater class cannot rest on the top of the roof for so long. Kapag hindi kasi naka-inclined yung ating bubong class, Ang tendency niyan ay magbabara yung mga tubig ulan dun sa ating bubong. At hindi tatagal yung bubong natin kapag ganun ang nangyari. Ang possibility niyan class ay masisira yung bubong natin kapag marami na yung tubig na nasa ibabaw nito. Kaya it's better na yung bubong natin is designed as inclined plane. Now this time, let's discuss your activity number 2 entitled Cutting with Wedge. In your activity class, you were able to use the knife or the axe and even the hand saw. How are knife, axe, and the saw used in activity number two? Yes, the knife is used to cut the apple or to slice the apple. And of course, the axe is used to cut the wood. And we use the saw in cutting the bamboo. Now study the surface of the knife class. Take a closer look on its surface. How does its surface look like? That angle. What have you noticed on the surface of the knife? How about the axe? Please study the surface of the axe closely. What have you observed on the surface of the axe? Try to have a closer look. How does the axe surface look like? Now this time, take a closer look on the surface of the handsaw. How does it look like? May kapareho ba yung surfaces nila sa axe at saka sa kutsilyo kanina? How about this angle? Try to take a closer look on the surface of the handsaw. Now what can you say about the surfaces of this saw, the axe, and the knife. Let's have the knife first. What can you say about the surface of the knife? Yes, the knife has sloping surface. Yung surface ng knife, if you want to take it closer, this is how it looks like. And this is a sloping surface. The axe also has a sloping surface, just like the knife. 
If we take a closer look on the surface of the saw, it would look like this. As you notice, it has a slooping surface also. Now, which part of the knife, the axe, and the hand saw cuts the objects? Which part do you think? Yes, the edge and the pointed part of the knife cut the object such as the apple. And the sloping surface such as this axe splits the object apart. Now, what type of tool are the knife, the axe, and the saw? What do you think? Yes, very good. They are called wedge. Now, do you have an idea how wedge form? As you see here, wedge is formed when two inclined planes are combined and positioned back to back that tapers to a thin edge. And this forms a sharp edge. So how do you describe or define wedge now? Yes, very good. Wedge is an inclined plane or two inclined planes that meet each other to form a sharp edge. Now, how wedge is used? How do we use wedge? Yes, very good. Wedge is usually used for cutting or splitting certain materials apart just like you see here on the screen. But how to increase the force applied when using a wedge? How do you think? To increase the force applied to a material, actually class, we can use a longer wedge with thinner edge. If the plane is small, the wedge yields a larger force and may do a lot of work easier and faster rather than an edge with wider angle. Mas maliit at mas manipis na wedge, mas malaki yung work na magagawa with lesser force exerted. What are examples of wedge that carpenters usually use? What do you think? What is that? Yes, carpenters use chisel. Chisel is an example of a wedge. Some more. What is that? Yes, nail is an example of a wedge. And how about this? Yes, obviously, this is a handsaw. How about the gardeners? What examples of wedge do they use? Are you familiar with this? What do you call that one? Yes, that's a shovel. How about this? Yes, that's a hoe. Gardeners also use this rake. Very good. So these are some of the tools used by our gardeners. And these are all examples of wedge. How about our dressmakers? What examples of wedge do they use? Yes, very good. They usually use scissors. Some more. Very good. They use needle. And they use also safety pin. So these tools are common examples of wedge used by our dressmakers. What are other examples of wedges? So we have here a knife, obviously, is an example of wedge. What do you call this? Yes, a doorstop. And we have also a staple wire. And this one is an ice pick. So these are also examples of wedge. So this time, let's discuss your activity three entitled working with screw. Now, how do you describe the screw class? Let us take a closer look on its appearance. What can you say about the body of the screw? Please observe it.
Let's have a closer look on the screw. Now, how do you describe screw class? Yes, it has a long, thin metal cylindrical shaft, just like here. Some more. Let us have a closer look on its body. Here you go. What do you call this part spiraling the cylindrical shaft of the screw? Yes, we call this as thread. Now, what do we mean by thread? Any idea? You can describe it using the illustration you see here on the screen. Yes, thread is a spiral ridge that surrounds the cylinder from the tip to the head. What have you noticed about the shape of the thread here? Does it look like the one that we have discussed earlier? What do you think? The screw also has its turning head, this one. The head part of the screw where the screwdriver can be used to rotate it. Now, how would you describe or define a screw now? Yes, very good. Screw is a spiral inclined plane. It has cylindrical body with thread. Yes, class. Our screw is also considered as inclined plane. Now, this is how to illustrate the body of the screw. It is made up of metal shaft and the thread spiraling it. And how screw is used? Any idea? Yes, screw is commonly used to hold things together and, of course, with the help of a screwdriver. And how strong can a screw hold? May kinalaman ba ito sa arrangement ng kanyang thread? Ano ba yung mangyayari kapag medyo dikit-dikit yung thread ng isang screw? Now, the strength the screw can hold would depend on the width of its thread and the distance between them. Meaning, the closer and wider the thread, the stronger the screw can hold. Mas malapad. At mas dikit-dikit yung mga thread ng isang screw, then mas matindi yung kapit niya sa isang bagay o mapagdidikit pa niya lalo ang dalawang bagay. However, more threads will require more rotation and more rotation will require more of your effort. But it would really hold things together. Yun nga lang class. Kung masyadong dikit-dikit yung mga thread at malalapat pa ito, mas malaki yung pwersa na kakailanganin mo para umikot ito. Pero kapag nagawa mo yan, it would really hold things much stronger. Now, what are the uses of screw? Screws are used to hold the different parts of the tables or even the chairs. Screws are not just used in holding parts of the objects, but screws are also used for lifting, just like the jack screw here on the screen. The jack screw is used to lift the vehicle up. Just like you see here on the screen, screws are also used for drilling holes in the objects, like for example in the wall and other surfaces. Now what are other examples of screws? Now, this is the nut and this is the bolt. These are all examples of screws. The bolt and the nuts really come together. You can turn clockwise or counterclockwise to lock and unlock the bolt and the nut. And they fasten or hold things or materials together like that of the parts of the different machines we use every day. Just like you see here on the screen. You see here, the different parts where uh, the bolts and the nuts are used. The car jack here is an example also of screw. The car jack is used to raise or lift the vehicle up. 
Observe how the carjack here lift the vehicle. So that makes the carjack an example of a screw. What are other examples of screws aside from the things I have mentioned here? Yes, the faucet has part called screw. This part and this part. Some more. The head of the bottle, the bottle cup itself, the jar and the lid of the jar are all examples of screw. Yes, even the bottom end of the bulb is an example of the screw. Let us now discuss your activity 4 entitled, Let's Get Rollin' by this or that. Now, what do you think is the better tool to use in transferring heavy grocery items? This basket or that cart? What do you think? Yes, very good! That cart is better tool to use in transferring heavy grocery items than this basket. Why can you say that the use of that rolling cart is better in transferring heavy loads than the basket. Very good! It has wheel and axle. The wheel and axle attached to the cart makes the pushing of the grocery items much easier in which it only requires less of your effort or your force. Considering that, how do you describe wheel and axle then? Yes, very good. It is a tool that is made up of a shaft or rod. We call that as axle, where the circular frame or the wheel can revolve, just like you see here on the screen. Now, using this illustration class, where can we find the wheel and axle? First, where can we find the wheel? Yes, this is the wheel. And how about the axle? Yes, this is the axle. Now, how is the wheel connected to the axle? Actually, you can use this illustration in answering that question. Use the arrow as your guide. The axle turn, the wheels also turn, or the other way around. Now, how can you describe the rotation of the wheels and the axle? When the axle completes one rotation, the distance covered is somewhat small because its diameter is small. However, when the wheel turns, it covers a longer distance because its diameter is wide compared to the axle. This concept can be applied in riding a bicycle. Now, how is wheel and axle used? The wheel and axle is commonly used for transportation. It helps move objects from one place to another in a longer distance, a lot easier and faster. As you notice here, all means of transportation of all kinds of vehicles are common examples of tools with wheel and axle. Now, aside from having wheels which is commonly used for transportation, what more can you say about the wheel and axle? Can we say that only those things that are actually look like a wheel are the things that we could consider as wheel and axle? Lahat lang ba ng may gulong ang pwede nating matawag na wheel and axle? The concept of wheel and axle class can be applied to other things also, even without wheels. Yes, Kahit walang gulong class, pwede nating magamit yung konsepto ng wheel at saka ng axle. Since not all wheel and axles have wheels, we just have to remember this always. When the axle turns, the wheels also turn. Or the other way around. When the wheels turn, the axle turns. That is the basic concept of wheel and axle. Now, considering that, where else can we use the concept of wheel and axle? The concept of a wheel and axle class can be applied even when we use a screwdriver in turning 
and opening a screw in the wood or in the wall. Now, what represents the wheel and axle when we use a screwdriver? What do you think? The handle of the screwdriver represents the wheel. Very good. How about the shaft? The shaft represents the axle. Now, how is the concept of the wheel and axle can be applied in using a screwdriver? Now, when the handle of the screwdriver turns, the axle also turns. Applying the force on the handle or the wheel is easier than that turning only the shaft since the diameter of the handle is bigger than the shaft. The output force increases when the input force is applied in the handle of the wheel. So, ito yung concept class na pwede natin gamitin para makunek yung paggamit ng screwdriver sa wheel and axle. Kapag inikot mo na yung handle ng screwdriver, it acts as the wheel. And when the wheel turns, when the handle turns, itong shaft na to ay iikot din. Kapag iikot na yung shaft, makakagawa na ito ng work into the screw. Now, where else can we use the concept of wheel and axle? The use of faucet class also applies the concept of a wheel and axle. The faucet top here is the wheel and the shaft here is the axle. Without the faucet top class, it is very difficult to turn on the shaft or the axle. The steering wheel of a car class also applies the concept of a wheel and axle. This part here is the wheel. When the wheel turns, the shaft also turns. The doorknob has wheel and axle. This is the wheel and this is the axle. It is very easy to open and close the door by the use of a doorknob. Now, even the windmill class also apply the same concept. As you notice, the blade here considered as the wheel and the drive shaft here is the axle. And what is the purpose of a windmill once again? We've discussed this last time. Yes, very good. The windmill is a machine that harnesses the power of the wind. The windmill here is used to grind grains into flour, to pump water, or even to produce electricity. Now, let's discuss your activity number five. Try this or that. Now, what do you need to attach in the bucket or pail and in the rope to easily fetch water from the well? This pulley or that hanger? Now, it would be very difficult on your part if you pull the pail of water from the well using your bare hands. But if you use this pulley, it would help you in lifting the bucket of water from the well very easily. And how this pulley help in lifting the bucket of water from the wheel? The pulley class has groove wheel where the rope is placed. Just like you see here, the groove wheel turns around the axle. It helps in lifting the bucket of water easier and faster from the wheel. Now, how do you describe a pulley? Yes, very good. The pulley is a groove wheel that turns around an axle. It has a rope or wire that move along the wheel's circumference. How does pulley commonly used? Yes, very good. The pulley is commonly used in lifting or raising objects up with less effort. So this is the wheel, this is the axle, and this is the groove of the pulley. And pulley also is used for lowering objects or the load. Now, what do you think are the different types of pulley? The different kinds of pulleys are fixed pulley, movable pulley, and compound pulleys. Let's have first the fixed pulley. What do we mean by fixed pulley? And where do we usually use fixed pulley? Pulley has axle fixed on a surface and therefore does not move. So this is an example of a fixed pulley. As you notice here, this kind of pulley does not move because its axle is connected on the surface, just like here on the ceiling. 
The pulley that is used in the dip wheel is an example also of a fixed pulley. And the pulley that we use in raising and lowering the flag in the flagpole is also an example of a fixed pulley. Now, how about the movable pulley? What does it mean? The movable pulley moves along the rope or the wire. Kapag may pwersa na na in-apply dito sa rope, then kasama ng rope, Gagalaw din yung pulley. In movable pulley class, one end of the rope is connected to a fixed beam and the other end of the rope is free to move the load. And the pulley here is found at the center. Where can we use movable pulley? Saan ba natin ito nagagamit? Are you familiar with this? Yes, the pulley used in the zip line is an example of a movable pulley. The pulley moves along with the load. The pulley used in this exercise machine class is a movable pulley. The pulley used by the construction workers here class is an example of a movable pulley. Now, how do you describe compound pulley? Yes, compound pulley is made up of combination of two or more fixed and movable pulley. Just like here, this is a fixed pulley and this is the movable pulley. If you combine this together, then you can form compound pulley. It is more easy to lift objects with the use of compound pulleys. Kapag gumamit ka ng compound pulley class, mas gagaan at mas less ang effort na i-exert mo in lifting objects up or even in lowering objects. Where can we use compound pulley? Yes, compound pulleys are used in weight lifting equipment just like you see here on the screen. This is an example of a compound pulley. Nakasakay ka na ba ng elevator? Yes, elevators use compound pulleys in lifting people or lifting objects up in the building or even when you want to go down from the building. Compound pulleys also are used in the cargo ship class. As you notice here, it is very easy to lift very heavy cargo by the use of compound pulleys. Let's discuss your activity 6. Open using this or that. Now, what tool is appropriate to use in opening the bottle of beverages? This spoon or that bottle opener? The bottle opener is better tool to use in opening bottles of beverages. Why can you say that this bottle opener is better to use than the spoon? The use of bottle opener requires only less effort in opening the bottle of beverages. That's why it is easier to use this than the spoon. What kind of tool is the bottle opener? Yes, the bottle opener is called a lever also. And how do you describe a lever? Yes, lever is a straight rigid bar that is free to turn about a fixed point called full crew. And what are the three parts of the lever? Now, the parts of the lever include the load, the effort, and the fulcrum. And what do we mean by fulcrum? Yes, fulcrum is the supporting point of the lever. And how about the effort? What do we mean by effort? Yes, effort is the force used to cause the movement. How about the load? What do we mean by load? Yes, the load is the weight being moved or lifted. Is it important to identify the three parts of a lever? Yes, it is important to identify the three parts of a lever because these are used in identifying the three classes of lever. And what do you think are the different classes of lever? Different classes of lever are the first class lever, the second class lever, and the third class lever. By simply looking at this illustration, how would you describe the difference 
of these three types of lever. Yes, very good. As you notice, the arrangement of the three parts of the lever distinguish the different classes of lever. Let us have first the first class lever. And how do you describe it? Now, if the fulcrum is found at the center of the load and the effort, then that lever is considered the first class lever. And what are examples of the first class lever? Now, basically, class, the first class lever looks like this one. A long bar and balanced by a fulcrum at the center. By pushing one end of the lever just like here, it makes the other end go up. Kapag may ini-apply ka na na force dito sa kabilang side ng lever, ang kabilang side ay aangat. Yan yung konsepto ng first class lever. Just like a CISO class. Yes, a CISO is an example of first class lever. You notice here, it is just a long bar and balance with a fulcrum. And the fulcrum is found at the center of the lever. Now, with this concept, we can say that lever is also used to lift objects. Now, for example, class, a metal rod here and a stone at the center will be able to lift this load or the cabinet here. Yes, this is an example of the first class lever because the fulcrum is found at the center. But you know what class? Lever is not limited with the concept of a long bar just like here. We can use other things also which could be considered as lever. And what do you think would be the example for that? Yes, the scissors also works with the principle of a lever. Where can we find the lever, the fulcrum, and the load in the scissors? Yes, this is the effort. This is the fulcrum and this is the load part of our scissor. Now, considering this, scissors is one of the examples of a first class lever. Yes, pliers also an example of a first class lever. So this is the effort, the fulcrum, and the load. Yes, the hammer is also an example of a first class lever. Where can we find the fulcrum, the effort, and the load? Yes, this is the effort or the force being applied. Now, this is the load. This is where the force is being produced. And this part here is the support or our fulcrum. The load, the effort, and the fulcrum. That makes the use of hammer a lever. Now, how about the second class lever? How do you describe it? Now, the load of the second class lever is found at the center of the effort and the fulcrum. And can you give examples of the tools considered as the second class lever? Correct. The use of wheelbarrow is an example of a second class lever. This is the point where the force is applied. And this is the force. And this is the load in which the force is being produced. And the wheel part here is the support or your fulcrum. Again, this is the fulcrum, this is the effort, and this is the load. Since the load is located at the center, then the use of wheelbarrow here is considered as a second class lever. Some more examples? Yes, the nutcracker is also an example of a second class lever. This is the effort. This is where you apply the force. This is the fulcrum, this part of the nutcracker, and the nut will be placed here, and this is considered as the load. So the nutcracker is considered as the second class lever because the load is located at the center of the fulcrum and the effort. And we have the battle opener. We used this tool earlier in our activity, right? What class of lever do you think is the battle opener? Now, for us to determine what class of lever is this, let me show to you how it is used. This is how the battle opener used. For us to determine what class of lever is this, let us identify the different parts when we are using 
a bottle opener. So we have here letter A, the part B, and the part C. Let's have letter A. What part do you think is this one? This shows? Yes, very good. The support. No, when you are opening the bottle using the bottle opener. So if this is the support part, this means this is a fulcrum. Very good. And letter B, what part is this? Yes, this is where the work is being done. So this is the load. Very good. And obviously, letter C here is the effort or the force. So this is now the parts of the bottle opener. Use as lever. What is found in the center of the setup? Very good. The load. The load is found between the force and the fulcrum. So what class of lever does our bottle opener belong? Very good. Our bottle opener is also an example of a second class lever. Now let's proceed to the third class lever. So you notice here, the effort is found at the center of the fulcrum and the load. That's why it is called a third class lever. And what are examples of a third class lever? Yes, fishing rod is a third class lever. We apply force here. We hold the rod here. So that's why this is the effort. We support the rod here and this is called the fulcrum. And where can we find the load? Yes, we can find the load here. So what does it mean? Effort is found between the load and the fulcrum that makes the fishing rod a third class lever. Some more example. Yes, very good. The use of tong. The tong is an example of a third class lever. When you hold the tong, you hold in this part. Right? So the force is found here. And the support is located here. And the load, of course, is found here. So meaning, our effort is found between the load and the fulcrum when we are using a tong. So this makes a tong a third class lever. Some more example? Yes, the use of stapler is also an example of a third class lever. When we use it, we hold this on this part. And obviously, this is the force or the effort. And the fulcrum is located here. And of course, the load is located here. The effort is in between the load and the fulcrum. This makes the use of stapler a third class lever. Some more example? What do we use when we clean our house? When we sweep all the trash in our house, what do we use? Yes, we use a broom. And broom is also a third class lever. When we use it, when we use it in cleaning, we hold this this way. So this is the force, the input force. This is the fulcrum. This is the part where you balance while you are using the broom. And of course, the output force which is considered as the load. So the input force or the effort is located between the fulcrum and the load. That's why the use of broom is also considered as a third class lever. What are again the different tools we use in our activities? Yes, we use lever, pulley, wedge, screw, wheel and axle, and inclined plane. And how these tools help in doing our work every day. You're correct. These tools help our work done easier and faster. Now, if these tools make our work done easier and faster, then what do you call these tools? Now, we call those tools as simple machines. Very good. And to know more about simple machines, let us answer the activity 2 of the What's More part of your self-learning module. And this could be found on page 10. So, let us read the directions. Directions. 
match the simple machines in column A with its characteristics and uses in column B. Write your answer on the separate piece of paper. Again, you don't need to answer it in your paper because we will be answering it orally, all together. Now let's start with number one, the saw. How do you describe saw and how it is used? What do you think here? Very good! The saw has a sharp edge and used for cutting and slicing. Let's have number two, the broom. How do you describe broom and how it is used? What do you think is the answer for number two? Yes, the broom is long with a handle and is used to remove dirt. Next, the steering wheel. How do you describe and use steering wheel? Correct! The steering wheel is a round frame revolving on a shaft or rad and used to transport loads over land. How about number four, the slide? How it is used and how do you describe slide? Correct! Letter F. Slide is a flat and has a sloping surface and is used to connect a lower level to a higher level. Next, number five. Correct, letter C. The jar lid is an inclined plane with a spiral rib used to hold or fasten lifted objects. Good job. And the last, the pulley. Obviously, the answer is Letter E, the pulley is around with a rope and is used to raise and lower loads easier. Very good. Now this is the what's more part activity number two of your self-learning module. This time, let us have the activity number three still on the what's more part of your module. Directions, identify the type of simple machine shown in each illustration. Write lever, pulley, wedge, inclined plane, screw or wheel and axle. The first number is done for you. So let us identify what kind of simple machine is shown in each item. And number one is identified as pulley. And let's have number two. Yes, number two is a tong. And tong is... An example of a lever. How about number three? What is this? Yes, this is a slide. And slide is an example of? Very good. Inclined plane. Let's have number four. And number four is an ox. And ox is an example of? Wedge. Very good. Let's have number five. Number five is an example of wheel and axle. Next, number six. A scissor is an example of yes, a lever. But it could be also a wedge no? if we talk about the pointed part and uh, the sloping part of the scissor. But then, a scissor is classified also as a lever. Next, we have number seven. This part of the bulb. What do you call this? Yes, that's... A screw. Very good. Next, number eight. A stainless blade. And blade is an example of wedge. Very good. Let's have number nine. And number nine is a nail. And nail is a wedge. Very good. And the last number 10, this is used as 
Yes. An inclined plane. So this is now the activity number three of the what's more part of your module. Now, have you tried riding a bicycle class? Let us observe the different parts of the bicycle. Please observe the mechanical design or the mechanical parts of this bicycle. Try to look it closer. Okay. Let's have this angle. Let's observe it again. What can you say about the mechanical designs or parts of the bicycle? Can we see simple machines in the different parts of this bicycle? What do you think, class? Let's have a final look on the top view of this bicycle. Try to identify what parts of this bicycle considered as simple machine. Do we have simple machines found in the parts of this bicycle? Now, what have you noticed, class? Yes, very good. There are simple machines applied in the mechanical designs of this bicycle. Now, which part of the bicycle, where can we find the simple machine? Try to look at again. In what particular part of this bicycle can we find a simple machine? Or, what simple machine can we find in this bicycle? Yes, this handlebar used as lever. When you move it, it pivots or turns right here and this is the part where the fulcrum is found because of this it's easy to turn the wheel in the direction you want because of this handlebar you know what it's hard to control the bike without the handlebar without this lever find the wheel and axle in the bicycle here in the wheel it spins on this rod or shaft called the axle and as we all know we can carry load for a long distance using the wheel and axle. Now what else class? What simple machine can still be found in this bicycle? Now what have you noticed here class? On this part? Yes! The tip point of the gears here resembles like that of a wedge. Have you observed that? So this part can be considered as the wedge also. Now, do we have pulley in this bicycle? Yes. When you push the pedal, the front wheel moves the chains, which then turns the rear wheel. Ibig sabihin, kapag pinaikot mo yung pedal class, gagalaw din yung mga kadena. Kapag gagalaw na yung kadena, iikot na din yung likurang gulong ng bike. At kung iikot na yung likurang gulong ng bike, Yung bike natin ay gagalaw na din forward. Now, where can we find the screws of the bike? Yes, very good. The screws can be found all over the parts of the bike because the screws hold the different parts of the bike together. Now, this time, let's answer the what I can do part of your self-learning module and this could be found on page 13. Let's read the directions. Cite at least five activities at home using simple machines. Identify the simple machines used. Now let's have the possible answer for this activity. Now what have you seen here on screen? What does the woman here doing? Very good. Sweeping using brooms. And broom is an example of a lever. Next, how about that? How do you describe what you see here on screen? Yes, slicing the vegetables. And, and what is used in slicing? 
Yes, the knife. And the knife is an example of a wedge. Very good. So let's have this one. Can you identify the activity shown here on screen? Yes, opening the door using a doorknob. And doorknob is an example of wheel and axle. Very good. Next, what have you seen here? Yes, that's closing the window blinds. And the window blinds are example of pulley. Very good. And how about that? Yes, use a ladder in reaching things on the top of the cabinet. And the ladder is an example of an inclined plane. And how about this? Yes, that's opening or closing the jars. And the jar lid and the jar is an example of a screw. Very good. So this would be the possible answer on the what I can do part of your module. Now let's have this one. You want to build a garden bed in your backyard, but it is surrounded by big rocks. No matter how hard you try, you can pull it out of the ground. Now how will you solve this problem? What are you going to do? Yes, very good. We can use simple machine to solve this problem. And what kind of simple machine will you use to pull the big rocks out of the backyard? Yes, we can use the simple machine called lever to pull the big rocks easier. How will you use the lever in pulling or lifting these heavy rocks? Okay, first, put one end of the lever under the edge of the rock, just like here. And then we can use a smaller rock to serve as fulcrum, which is found in the middle of our setup, and put it under the lever, just like you see here on the screen. And then we can push on the other side of the lever until the rock will be lifted. Do you think it would lift the rock using this setup? Yes, it can move, but it might move or lift the rock very slowly. Now, is there a way to move the rock much easier? How will you do that? We will put the fulcrum closer to the rock we want to lift and then push on the other side of the lever. You notice the rock is now lifted. Now, using these two setup class, set A and set B, which is easier to lift the big rock? It is much easier to lift the big rock when the fulcrum is placed closer to it. Now, what can you say about the lever now? Yes, the lever is indeed a simple machine. It is very simple tool, but it can make our work done a lot easier and faster. Now, what do you think class will happen if we have no simple machine to help us in our work? Ano kaya yung mangyayari class kapag walang simple machine tayong magagamit para makatulong sa ating pang-araw-araw na gawain? Yes, very good. Life without simple machine would not be very easy. Siguro mahihirapan tayong gawin yung mga pang-araw-araw nating mga gawain. Remember that simple machines are found everywhere and they are already part of us in everything that we do. How can you be safe in using simple machine? Yes, we have to handle carefully all the simple machines that we are using every day and we should not play with these tools. Yes, they are very useful in our lives but if this is not handled carefully, this can cause harm, this can cause injury or accidents. Now, if you are handling all these machines very carefully, then what value are you showing? Yes, the value of carefulness. Remember class, we have to handle very carefully all the machines, all the simple machines that we are using 
every day to avoid accidents and any harm and injuries. Now, what do we mean now by simple machines? Yes, simple machines make work easier and faster. How many kinds of simple machines do we have? Yes, very good. We have six simple machines. And what are they? The different kinds of simple machines are lever, wheel and axle, wedge, inclined plane, screw, and pulley. Now let's answer the what I have learned part of your module found on page 12. Directions. Fill the blanks to complete the sentence below by choosing appropriate words found in the box. So we will just choose our answer inside the box. So let's have number one. I have learned that blank helps make work easier and faster. What do you think is the answer? Very good. Simple machines. Next, number two. I have learned that Blank is a bar that turns or lifts against a fulcrum or support. Correct, it's a lever. Next, I have learned that blank is a sloping surface used to raise heavy objects from a lower level to a higher level. What's the answer? Correct, it's inclined plane. Number four, blank is made up of a circular or round frame that revolves on a shaft or rod. Correct, it's wheel and axle. Number five, block is made up of two inclined planes placed back to back. Correct, it's wedge. Number six, block is an inclined plane wrapped in a cylindrical post. Yes, it's screw. And number seven, Blank uses wheels and a rope to raise, lower, or move a load easier. Correct, it's pulley. Now let's read all together the what I have learned part of your module. I have learned that simple machines help make work easier and faster. Lever is a bar that turns or lifts against a fulcrum or support. Inclined plane is a sloping surface used to raise heavy objects from a lower level to a higher level. Wheel and axle is made up of a circular or round frame that revolves on a shaft or rod. Wedge is made up of two inclined planes placed back to back. Screw is an inclined plane wrapped in a cylindrical post. Pulley uses wheels and a rope to raise, lower, or move a load easier. Now, do you have questions or clarifications about our lesson for this week? Now, if you have questions or any clarifications or the things that you are confused about our lesson, you may raise it up during our online kamustahan or you may raise it up in our group chat. We will discuss there the answers on the questions or clarifications you have. Understood? Okay, I guess you are now ready to take your assessment. We will use again your self-learning module for your assessment. And this could be found on page 14. So this time class, you prepare a one-fourth sheet of paper to take the assessment part of your lesson here. I will give you five minutes to answer your assessment. Direction, analyze carefully the following questions and write the letter of your answer on the separate sheet of paper. Yes, this time class, you need to write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Let's see if you really have understood our lesson for this week. Are you ready? Do you have with you your one for sheet of paper now? Again, I'll be giving you five minutes to finish your assessment. Are you ready? Your time starts. Now,
Are you done with your assessment? Very good. This time, I'll be giving you your assignment or your additional activities at home. But I'll be giving you two options. Okay? Now, option number one is found in your self-learning module. And here's the direction. Directions. Classify the following simple machines listed inside the box according to its type. You are given various tools here, class. And all you have to do is to group or classify them what kind of simple machines are these tools. Okay? And all you have to do is to write here in given table. Okay? And you have to copy this and answer your additional activities found in your self-learning module in a one-half sheet of paper. And don't forget to label your paper, your one-fourth sheet of paper, Science 6 Additional Activities. Copy and answer this in your one-half sheet of paper. Understood? Very good. Now, as I said, I'll be giving you two options in doing your additional activities. So, this is option one. I'll be giving you option number two. If the materials are available at home, then you perform or you do part 2 of the additional activities. Pag pinili mo yung part 2 class, you don't need to answer this part of your module. Understood? Pero kung wala kang materials available para gamitin mo sa paggawa ng part 2 na activity, then ito na yung gagawin mo. Ang part 1 lang. Sa tingin mo, kaya mo nang gawin yung part 1 at saka part 2, then pwede din naman. Now, what is the activity for your part 2? Now, the part 2 of your assignment or additional activity is a simple machine challenge. As we all know, engineers design and build machines to help our work done easier and faster. In this challenge class, you will explore more about the use of simple machine. Now, what is your challenge? Using the given materials, invent. A way to send a ping pong ball flying high enough to catch it. You can design any tools and apply the concept you've learned about the simple machine, particularly the lever. Lever can convert a small motion into a large motion. Let your imagination fly high. What are the materials you need? For this activity, you will need a duct tape. 3 to 5 paint steers, 1 ping pong ball, 1 wooden block or spool, and 3 ounce paper cups. So using this materials class, you have to make, you have to invent something, any tools that could make the ping pong ball fly high. So gagawa ka ng isang bagay class sa kung saan magagamit mo ito para paliparin o ihagis ng mas mataas ang ping pong ball. Now, are the instructions clear? Again, class, kung magagawa mo yung part 2 kasi available yung mga materials na to sa bahay mo, then ito na yung gagawin mo. Pwede nang hindi mo gawin yung part 1. Kung hindi naman available yung mga materials na to sa bahay mo at wala ka talagang mapagkukunan, pwede mo namang hindi ito gawin at Yung part 1 na lang yung isasubmit mo. Pero kung sa palagay mo, kaya mo namang gawin yung part 1 at kaya mo din naman yung part 2, then pwede mo namang gawin yung dalawang activities for your assignment. Understood? Now, for part 2 class, pwede kang gumamit ng mga alternative materials if you want class. Yung mga available lang sa bahay nyo, pwede mong tanungin yung parents mo o yung guardian mo sa bahay kung anong pwedeng alternative sa mga materials na ibinigay ko. Basta, ang importante, makaka-invent ka, makakagawa ka ng isang bagay na magagamit mo para maihagis ng mas mataas ang ping pong ball. And that is your challenge. Kung sa palagay mo, mas madadalian kang gawin yung activity na to, aside na may kasama ka ngang parent or guardian, kung gusto mo, may kasama kang kapwa mo grade 6 din, na nag-aaral sa Escalante Central Elementary School, you can do it in pair. Pwede sa isang activity, for this activity, dalawa kayo ang gagawa. Pwede yan. Now, make sure class, 
when you do it in pair, you have to observe always proper health protocol. Now, another option. Kung kaya mo at kung may gamit ka sa bahay nyo, you can make a vlog while performing this activity. And you can use any language you want in your vlog. You can use English, you can use Filipino, or even in your own dialect in Cebuano. Pwede mong gamitin kung anong lingwahe ang komportable kang gamitin in recording your activity or in making your vlog. Understood? Now, kung magde-decide ka na mag-vlog, then you may submit that in my email address. Or pwede mong isave naman sa USB mo at isubmit mo sa akin. Okay class, remember, please observe our basic safety rules in performing whatever activities in science. Understood? Do not do our science activity alone. Kinakailangan meron kang kasama na parent or guardians para gumawa ng mga activities mo. Understood? Again class, safety first. Now reminder class, what to submit this coming retrieval day. Just submit one fourth sheet of paper, the one you use in your assessment. And for your additional activities, you may submit your one half sheet of paper, the part one of your additional activities, or you may submit your output in the part two of your additional activities. Or you may submit both the part one and the part two of your additional activities. Now, if you have questions, clarifications about our lesson class and about the things that you will be submitted, your outputs to be submitted, you can raise it up during our online kamustahan or we call this in our school as eConnect. So, what is the schedule of our eConnect again? Very good. Every Wednesday of the week. Or you may text or call me if you have questions and clarifications about our lessons. Or maybe you may direct message me in the messenger. But then, remember our schedule. You can text, you can call me, you can direct message me every Wednesday of the week, 2.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon only. Understood? Very good. Now, if you want additional resources in Science 6 or in Mathematics 6, you can visit my YouTube channel. I have videos there. I have tutorials there about the lessons in science and mathematics. Now, that's all for this week, class. Thank you so much for participating. Have a blessed week ahead. Don't forget to stay home and be safe always. Till next time, keep safe, everyone. Go.